until the time when the rapture takes place. That's not everybody that has been baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Because the scripture teaches us and tells us that everybody baptized and filled will not be in the rapture. Remember in the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the parable of the ten virgins? Five were what? Five were what? Five were foolish and the other five were what? Wise. So how many made it? Well, we don't know. People will automatically tell you that the five wise made it. But the Bible didn't say the five wise made it. First of all, you had ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. The five were foolish only because they did not take any oil with them and their lamps went out. The five wise were wise only because they brought extra oil with them. So when the oil in the lamps of the five foolish went out, they asked the wise to give us some of your oil. They said, oh no, we'll give you some of ours. We won't have none left for us. Go and buy from those that sell. So while they went to go by, the bridegroom came. And the scripture says, and they that were ready. It never said it was the five wise, but they that were ready went with the bridegroom. So in the church, you have those that are foolish. In the church. Can we say amen? In the church you have those that are wise. But even among those that are wise, some of them might not even make it. So, the firstborn among many brethren are the many brethren that were to come after him that received the experience. But the bride of Christ are those that will make the rapture and all of us are not going to make it. When I say all of us, I'm saying all of us that have been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, the whole entire body of Christ. Everybody's not going to make it. Now we used to sing a song when I was coming up, Lord don't let me fail, I want to be your bride. And that song was inaccurate saying it like that. Um, but it was more accurate to say, I want to be in the bride. You see, in the first chapter of the book of Ephesians, there are seven spiritual blessings spoken of in that first chapter. Spiritual blessings. And one of those spiritual blessings is that he has made us accepted in the beloved. When the rapture takes place, and it can take place at any time, the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout. He will say, come my people. And those that are ready, those that he feels are accepted at that time with him, will go in the rapture with him. And everybody else that was not ready will be left. And that's why he said, be ye also what? Ready. Now you think about those that will be in the rapture. And look at the quality of life that they live. And the character that they display before God. You got people like Abraham. That's going to be in there. Isaac. Jacob. David. Moses. Joshua. Ruth. You got the prophets. You know, you got uh, um, Enoch. All of these Bible heroes that we read about in the Old Testament. And you have to ask yourself, am I of the same quality of a saint as any of those people are? Because those are the individuals that are already going to be in the rapture. Even our own dear son that uh, departed from here, the first person to die saved in this church, Daniel. With the testimony that he left on record. Am I of the quality of a saint before God as he was? Am I, have, am I of the quality of the saint uh, that Abraham was? So we have individuals that we can look at in the Bible and even in our times. Bishop Haywood, Bishop, the Bishop Paddock, Bishop Carl F. Smith, uh, uh, Evangelist Mildred Boyd who God used lay hands on a blind baby and God formed eyes in that baby's head while uh, they, the family was standing at the altar and people saw it. All these type of things. Um, are we of that quality? Now, 
It's not his will that any should perish. Can we say amen? amen? But that all should come to repentance. And God did not save us for us to be lost. He saved us uh, to live with him. And But it depends on us. Are we willing to do whatever it takes to make it? Or are we so caught up in the things of the world that we can't even see Jesus as we ought to? Abraham was a wealthy man. The Bible lets us know he never built a house. He didn't go out and buy iPads and iPods and stuff like we do today. Of course, he didn't have any in that day. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with buying those things anyway, but I'm just making a point. He wasn't caught up in the things of this world. The Bible says he looked for a city with foundations who builder and maker was God. And when you look at people like Abraham, Moses, who the Bible says was the meekest man on the earth, who was the only man that God talked to face to face, these are the type of people that will be in the rapture. Well, when we look at ourselves, what quality are we? How do we stand up in the light of those individuals? Now, we can make it. It depends on us. Can we say amen? Because he did not give us the Holy Ghost for us to miss the rapture. He gave us the Holy Ghost to make the rapture. And so if we look at these heroes of faith that have, uh, as Paul said, uh, look into those whose faith follow, left us an example. And we look at them and see the commitment that they had, the millions of Christians that gave their lives, that died a martyr's death. Those, the Bible says, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection, how do we stand up against them? Well, I'm quite sure that we can look at ourselves and see we have a lot of work to do on ourselves. Can we say amen? You know, rather than looking and criticizing other people. So, God declared the end from the beginning. And what he has done uh, in his plan we're in the sixth day of his plan. We're waiting on the rapture to take place. We are striving, living holy, following the word of God, laying aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, so that when the rapture takes place, he will stand in the heavens and look at us, and we will be accepted in the beloved. We will be accepted as members of the bride of Christ, and we'll be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That's the next thing that's to happen now. Now we've already covered the first six days. And now we're going into the seventh day. Now let's go back to Genesis chapter number two. And read the first few verses there. And then we're going to get into the seventh day. Now let's give you a little test here to see how much have you remembered. God has some days. How many days does he have? Seven days. That's right. And how long is each of those days? 7,000 years long. And what are, those, what are each of those days called? Now this is a little more difficult question. They're called what? The day of God. The day of God consists of each of the seven days of his created week. And uh, the day of the Lord, what's that? How long is the day of the Lord? Uh, how long is the day of the Lord? A thousand years and a thousand years of what? One day. How about the day of the Lord God? How long is that? 50,000 years. Somebody said 50. Anybody else say 10 years? The day of the Lord God is 50,000 years. And the day of the Lord God is the sum total of all of God's times. Now we're going to look into the 50th year called the year of the Jubilee uh, before we're finished. Alright, so Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 2. Alright, let's read there. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he what? What did he do? He rested. Now he hasn't rested yet. But again God called those things that be not as what? Though they were. 
This is before the foundation of the world.